Good morning. I'd like to use for a sermonic theme, a rehab job before and after. Anthony Ray Hinton in 1985, at 29 years old, was arrested and charged for the brutal murder of two fast food restaurant workers. Despite no eyewitnesses and no evidence and a solid alibi, he was tried and sentenced to death. He recalls everything he believed in and had been raised as a child to believe in left him. He was put in isolation and watched, 40, and watched 54 men and one woman walk down the long hallway to their execution. He recalls you could smell the burn of their flesh afterwards. He kept holding on and encouraging other inmates to hold on. And then one day he met Brian Stevenson, the author of Just Mercy and renowned American lawyer who fights for humans wrongfully convicted. Brian Stevenson spent 16 years working on Mr. Hinton's case. Stevenson says he wasn't convicted because he committed a crime. He was convicted because he was poor and he didn't have the resources to prove he was poor. In 2014, the Supreme Court unanimously overturned his conviction. He is now authored The Sun Does Shine, waking us up to unjust circumstances that happen in our world every day. Those were his first words when he left prison and he felt the sun and he saw the sun shine on him after being locked up for 30 years. Before and after, Anthony Ray has a lot to say about his life before prison and after. He was wrongfully accused of a horrific crime. His name was slandered. His family was emotionally ripped apart. His humble life was taken from him. He was cast under the gaze of guilt and doubt. And there was nothing, nothing that Anthony could do about it. He was stripped of everything good in his life. You don't ever get to walk away from such an experience. And yet, after he joined with Brian Stevenson in advocating against the death penalty, things began to change. After such an experience, he co-founded Equal Justice Initiative. After prison, he dedicated his life to raising awareness about wrongful convictions and the flaws in the criminal justice system. After death row, he has written a book. Many of our lives have a before and after. For some, it's before and after Jesus. Before Jesus, I was a hot mess, but after, after. This is where we enter the biblical text today. Before Jesus, this man had been living his life possessed with an unclean spirit. D. Mark Davis calls it the man and his cage. How appropriate given our reflection on the man and his prison cell, the woman and her jail, the people and their circumstances, to see one without the other. One has to see their same sameness, the man and the cage, and yet we have to see their difference. If we merely see their sameness, we would be reducing this man's humanity to his situation. But if we merely see the unclean spirit as a different entity than the man, we would be ignoring the tragedy of this man's life. The degree to which this unclean spirit has damaged his psyche, his body, his relationships, his ability to be productive and live a happy life. The full tragedy of this man in the Bible today the full tragedy of this man's life is honored in the Gospel of Mark. Before can be cloaked in innocence, an innocence all of its own. Before I became possessed by an unclean spirit, 
before prison, before I became isolated and lonely, before I took that turn in the road, before I got married, before college, before I left home, I was determined to do things my own way, before coming to America, before I got the news of cancer, before I lost the most important human being in my life, before I learned the family secret, before Jesus, before Jesus came into my life, before Jesus set me free, before Jesus put my feet on higher ground, before I came into a loving relationship with Jesus, before I saw the light. Anybody remember before? Before. Today, Jesus gives us an after, an after, after. After the disruption of the unclean spirit in this man's life, Jesus tells, tells the unclean spirit, come out of him. After the unclean spirit has just about destroyed this man's life, after being isolated, after the voices speaking through him, but not for him after not being able to get a job, after not being able to have a relationship with his family, after being looked on with scorn, after the stereotypes, after giving up, after the years, after the tears, after the pain, after 30 years of hell on earth, Jesus is walking by. The man in his cage, the man in his prison, the woman in her circumstances, the man and his cage are in the synagogue. And the unclean spirit recognizes Jesus right away, wondering if their time is up. After all of this, the man is freed from the invasion. There's this beautiful song that says, what do you do when you've done all you can? And it seems like it's never enough. What do you say? when your friends turn away and you're all alone. Tell me, what do you give when you've given your all and it seems like you can't make it through? Will you just stand when there's nothing left to do? You just stand. Watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can. After. You've done all you can. You just stand. All of our lives are filled with a before, but thanks be to God, they're filled with an after. This week, I got to sit with someone right after surgery. I was there before the surgery, and we did that thing called prayer. And I listened to the person talk about the fear. And this person had done all of her homework on what the procedure was going to look like. And we had spoken to God about her nerves. And we had spoken to God about the waves in her life. She had all the information she could know about this procedure. She was prepared before she had the procedure. But how many of you all know that after is another story? That evening, I got the call. I could hear the nurse trying to calm her down. But the after had come for her and she was crying and not able to talk. In the after, they had not been able to wake her up. In the after, she could hear them talking about her condition, but not able to communicate. In the after, the doctors had discovered some other complications once they had started the surgery. And in the after, she found herself confused and in trauma. You see, there's a before, but then there comes an after and an after. One mother remembers when she was pregnant with ten, twins, she was a feminist and she was a career woman and her professional life mattered to her. She was the CEO of her company. And she said, I'm not looking to become Betty Crocker. She was clear before her delivery, she was gonna maintain her individuality. How many of y'all know there's an after? She was still going to advocate for others. She was still going to fight for fair wages. She still was going to be on top of her game. But then there came an after. On the front end, we can say what we're going to do. We can, get, we can relieve our good intentions. But in the after, when reality and spirituality find us, 
Sometimes it's a different story. As much as she tried, she said, Pastor Charlene, I was different. Holding those two little guys next to me, my sons changed my life forever. Our country is a nation of before and after. While we are seeing record numbers of migrants come now and our country feels torn, sometimes I wonder why are we acting so crazy? Because it is in our history. It is in our DNA. There are so many stories of before and after, people who have sacrificed life as they knew it because they wanted something better for their families and themselves. Even in our congregation right now, there are afters. Recently, I was in the car dealership, and the car dealership guy just starts talking to me and sharing his life story. He tells me that he's from another country. I can kind of hear it. He tells me that he fought in a war on the wrong side. He tells me he wanted to come to America. He saved and he saved. And then finally, his wife won the lottery. They packed their bags and their money. They fixed some food, and they flew into O'Hare Airport. They knew not absolutely no one when they got off the plane. They rented a cheap hotel. And because they knew nothing about controlling their heat, for the first few days, they sat in a cold room shivering. They spoke no English. He says after five days, he thought to himself, we got to do something. Our food and our money is getting lower and lower. He went out, and he looked around him, and across the highway, he saw limousines. And he said to himself, I know how to drive a limousine. He crossed the highway and walked into a coffee shop. And to his delight, it wasn't the coffee and it wasn't the food, but he heard people speaking his language. And there in the shop, he found a whole community of people that came from his country. One of the ladies there helped people who came from their country, went back to his hotel, packed him up, and put him in an apartment. He says, now I have a home and I have a few cars. His story is about the after of our lives. We don't know what tomorrow will bring, but we know who holds our after. We know who holds our future. I imagine the man in the text had an after too. This is where I was, but look how far God's brought me. Maybe that's your testimony too. I remember when, but look at me today. I was strung out, but look at me now. After Jesus showed up, let me tell you, those unclean spirits left and they ain't never coming back. I've suffered, but I'm free today. You might have had a before story that you're not sharing so liberally, but aren't we so glad that Jesus enters our after? Jesus is there. Jesus is waiting. Jesus is willing. And when necessary, Jesus speaks not only to the ways, but to the unclean spirit. Today, I began with the story of Anthony Ray Hinton, his before. But he lives now in life after prison. He says he took all that his mom taught him. It took everything that his mom taught him about God to survive in prison. But after, a light shone on him. Jesus is waiting to enter our after. A rehab job in process. After prison, Anthony Ray found a cause larger than himself, which he hadn't had before. He was not going to do a lot of things in life. 30 years is a long time to spend in prison. His dreams were gone forever. But now he had a platform to be heard. And like Hamilton, he wasn't going to miss his shot. And so Anthony Ray is bringing awareness to the justice system 
and the death penalty. After the storm, no matter what the storm looks like, we can stand. After the prisons of our life, we can testify. After the impact of life on us or whatever we go through, there is a better day. And we are living and walking after everything that has happened to us. We are living and walking in the light and the love and the glory of God. Amen. Amen.